Good morning and Merry Christmas. That's right, it's Christmas Day. Merry Christmas to everybody and all. And I'm here today to bring you my midday Q&A video. That's right, I'm the Duck Man. Skeeter back there is answering me. She's actually not too far away. I haven't gotten her out of bed yet. It's uh, it's Christmas morning, and I'm a single guy, and I haven't got any family, so I live by myself. And sometimes I do go to visit family, but this year I got stuck with some work, so I'm unable to leave. I figured this morning we'll start out the morning with a nice eggnog. And that's right, I don't usually drink in the morning, and this is going to be something a little bit uh, rum-infused, yeah. But, you know, it's a holiday. It's a special day, and I'm going to do whatever the f*** I want. So that's right. Merry Christmas to you guys. And Merry Christmas to me. So we're gonna get set up here in just a couple minutes And I'm gonna show you how to make a proper duck man Christmas eggnog. That's right as well as some other things We're gonna answer some other questions about Eleanor and uh, the engine that I was trying to put in the car yesterday And some of the problems that I had along the way and uh, a few other things So anyways stick around lots more to come don't forget to subscribe pluck little dingle bell You see next to the subscribe button give me a licky likey I mean you might enjoy this video who knows and I, I you know I ask that you click the licky likey anyway even if you don't because that makes a big difference as far as my exposure on YouTube. And I really do appreciate you guys. Once again, Merry Christmas, and we'll be back right after the intro. Ooh. Yeah, I haven't yet gotten the ducks out of bed. <laughs> yeah, Scooter's still in her bed up here. And Boomer's still down below. Now looking at the floor, I see he's already crapped and he's trampled in it. So I'm going to have to mop the floor in here, but that means he got out of the box and uh, went back into it. Boomer, you are notoriously trouble. Yeah, you are always so much trouble. Yes, you are. But it's Christmas morning and you two are going to sleep in for a little while. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, Daddy's going to go record a video. All right, we'll be back in a minute. Oh, man, it's Christmas time, and eggnog is one of my favorite parts of the holiday season. It's just, it's just, it is, it is. And, you know, I don't like to show brand names in my videos, and I'm going to actually make a video about that. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but it's coming. It is coming. I promise you guys, it'll probably be up in the next few weeks. But uh, I am going to show brand names in this video, and I don't give a damn. So, you know, whatever should happen, if my AdSense royalties go away on this video, I don't care, because this is for Christmas. <laughs> First thing you need is eggnog. That's right, you need some eggnog. You're going to need a glass to put it in, too. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to show you how to make a proper Duckman eggnog. Okay, I figured I would do this right here in my workshop. Workshop is uh, very well lit, and, well, I kind of like the uh, the cutting mat look <laughs> against my blue cup. And that's right, even eggnog goes into a blue cup. Or in this case, it's actually a glass. I don't even know where that came from. That's been in my house for quite a while. But the first ingredient, and it's probably the most important ingredient, is going to be the rum. That's right. And then I'll drink that Kraken garbage. This is This is some serious stuff. I just got this bottle last night. Now normally I don't drink that much of it. The reason why I buy the big bottle is because it's cheaper. You know, you pay less pennies per ounce to get the bigger one. But the first ingredient is gonna be the rum. And there's a reason why I put that in first. And yes, I did pour it kinda heavy. And one of the reasons is, is because your eggnog is gonna dilute it tremendously. It's also gonna coat your stomach. So you're not gonna get as much of the, uh, the happiness effect as you would otherwise. I'm going to throw a little bit of vanilla extract in there, just a little, just a touch, a quick squirt, and this, uh, this here may raise a little bit of controversy, but I do like to put, crap, a piece of ice in it, I haven't even started drinking yet, because when you start pouring the eggnog into the rum, it gets warm, <laughs> okay, go ahead and get that eggnog, opened up and I prefer a resealable container but I guess this is okay oh my that stuff is thick and the rum always goes in first because you want it to, to mix or at least mix as well as you can get it look at that it looks all lumpy <laughs> it actually looks like it's starting to curdle which really isn't much of a surprise I suppose an awful lot of the rum sitting on top mmm but that's just fine with me. A little bit of nutmeg, 
just a light dusting of it. And one more thing, a little bit of cinnamon. Oh, the cinnamon's not even opened. Man, video fail. Be nice if I had this ready to go, but I sure didn't. Uh-uh. Little bit of cinnamon. And that is a proper Duckman eggnog. Haha. <laughs> Bottoms up. Merry Christmas once again. Oh my god, that's heaven. Now I don't drink that crack and rum garbage. I like black magic. Black Magic is a fairly new rum. They're not paying me for an advertisement, by the way, and they should because this is this is my go-to rum. And I have made a lot of converts to people that always say, well, I drink the Kraken, or I like Bacardi. Kraken is garbage. Bacardi is, it's okay, I like Bacardi. But Black Magic, this rum, is something else. And even people that aren't rum drinkers, as soon as they catch a whiff of this stuff, they all say, I want some of that. This is excellent, and it's especially good in things like eggnog, but it's also good in cola. I'm going to get to a rum and cola drink in another, another video. It's not actually going to be in this one because that's not very Christmassy. And I guess if you have enough of them, you start seeing flying reindeer. <laughs> so I suppose it could be Christmassy no matter what, but this is, this is good. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, if you watched my video, I'm spitting already. Oh my. <laughs> if you watched my video yesterday where I did the engine swap over on Eleanor's pan, you probably remember that uh, I got stuck and I couldn't finish it because the torque wrench broke. It appears the ratcheting head that's on it, the uh, teeth of the gears inside the ratcheting head just stripped or broke or something skipped the tooth. When I was starting to calibrate it, I only got to about 10 pounds and all of a sudden the ratchet just went clunk and it felt like it skipped some teeth. So I wound it back and tried again, and then it, it grabbed, and it started to get a little more torque onto it, and then all of a sudden it just choo, it jumped teeth again. So that um, that's not something I'm going to trust as being accurate, especially for doing something as delicate as a Volkswagen engine. Those uh, heads need to be torqued down properly, and I want to make sure that they are. They might be fine. They might be fine. Uh, guesses are from some of the people that uh, commented on the video that based on the color of the oil that the engine had been run only a couple hundred miles and that's consistent with the story that I got from the previous engine's owner who had it rebuilt. Um, that's a really sad story, a really, really sad story. I, I don't know if I've ever shared that story. But uh, yeah, I bought that Beetle from a girl and, um, well, no, not from the girl actually. I bought it from a guy, a few towns from here, relatively cheap. Rusted out, clapped out, totally, totally a mess. And uh, I didn't have a title, but he had a folder full of bill of sales. And there were about six bill of sales deep. And the first one with the earliest date belonged to a female. And kind of a surprise to me, uh, I punched her name into Facebook. And I thought that I had found her. And to my surprise, she was local, despite all the paperwork saying that she lived in Mississippi. And I figured it wasn't couldn't possibly be the same person, but it was the only person with that name, and it was a unique name. So all I did was I took a picture of the Beetle, and I sent the picture to her on Facebook without even saying hello or anything. I just photobombed her. I dropped the photo right on her head. And about 48 hours later, she responds and says, Is that my Beetle? And she knew right away that that was her car, or had been her car. And I had, many years had passed, you know, six different owners and a stack of bill of sales. And I explained to her, I said, there, there's no title on this car. And I'm trying to track down some kind of paperwork on it so I can title it here in Florida. And she says, yeah, it used to be a Mississippi car. Over in Mississippi, they don't do titles on classic cars. And she said she does, however still have the registration paperwork. Now, for those of you that uh, live in non-title states that move to a title state, you understand that you can take the registration with you to the new state, and a state like Florida will issue you a title based on the uh, name that's on the registration. Well, she was gracious enough, and I love her for this. Absolutely love her. But she took a copy of that registration that she still had, which was expired several years ago. I mean, way back. And... Um, mailed it to me along with a bill of sale as if I bought the car directly from her. And she did this without asking me for any additional money. I mean, I would have paid for at least a postage stamp on the envelope, if not anything else, and she refused to, to take anything for it. And uh, 
I took the registration and her bill of sale, totally taking the other six bill of sales and just throwing them away, and uh, went down to the local tax office and got a title. And I walked out of the office um, with a title to my 1965 Beetle that I had just bought, and uh, it was a mess, but I was going to rebuild it. Well, things come up along the way, and Eleanor popped up in my life. And that means the 65 Beetle, which I was going to restore, uh, went on a back burner. And that was the closest I could get to an early Beetle. I was not having any luck finding anything earlier than that. I really wanted a small window Beetle, and, and an oval would have been ideal. A split window would have been even better than that, but I never would have been able to build what I wanted to out of a split window because <laughs> split windows, even in trash condition, are worth way too much money. Ovals in trash condition, you can still find a cheap one if you're lucky, and I did. Well, anyway, Eleanor popped into my life, and the 65 Beetle got put on the back burner. I had already pulled the engine out of it, I had cut the floors out of it, and I was getting ready to restore it. And I put up several videos about me collecting parts for it and preparing to work on this car. And uh, just, it just it didn't happen. Eleanor popped up into my life, and uh, somebody else emailed the local Volkswagen Club Facebook page and asked if they knew anybody with a 70s Beetle for sale. And I said, well, I don't know anybody with 70s Beetles, but would you prefer a 60s Beetle relatively cheap? And they said, yes. So I showed them the car, and we came to a, an agreement on a really decent price. And uh, they wanted a rebuildable engine, so I gave them a rebuildable engine with it. I gave them... Uh, an entire interior, stuff that this car didn't have, um, a bunch of repair uh, parts to the car, an extra spare tire, I mean, it's just a whole bunch of stuff that, that the car never came with. So they ended up leaving with a pretty good deal. I actually made a little bit of money in the process as well, and uh, I managed to keep that engine. And uh, the girl that previously owned it told me that she and her dad worked on the car uh, about 10 years previous, and uh, he had an unfortunate uh, death. He, he just suddenly died. And it was heartbreaking for her. I mean, total heartbreak. And, and the car to her was she and Dad's project, and she couldn't work on it alone. So she, she had to let it go. She was really uncomfortable trying to do anything with it herself. I mean, in my opinion, you know, I would have done what I could to rebuild the car in Dad's honor. But, you know, I guess she felt she was overwhelmed, and she had a new baby on the way, and she was recently married. And there's another story on that, too. But uh, she moved on with her life, and she let the car go. Well, the car got sold, as I said, like six more times <laughs> until finally I wound up with it. And uh, I was very, very lucky to get in touch with her. I mean, the power of social media. I mean, you, you really, yeah, uh, you couldn't have done that a little more than 10 years ago. But today, with social media the way it is and how easy it is to find people, you know, cheers to that. Mm. Ah. Well, anyway, the story goes on a little bit further. She's still my friend on Facebook, but we don't really talk a whole lot. Well, one day her mom friended me on Facebook, and I thought that was a little weird since I never knew her mom and never talked to her mom. But she knew the interaction that I had with her based on, on the, uh, the sales slip of the car. So she um, called me one day to ask me if I knew where her daughter was at or if I knew anything about her daughter. I said, no, we really don't talk. We should, but we really don't. And then she told me what happened. And this is terrible. Well, the new baby was born, and uh, she had... Uh, uh, I think it might be a year or two old or something. And she went to her husband's workplace. And as she walked in the door, and this happened right in front of her. This is the way I was told the story. I don't know how much accuracy there is to it. I don't even know if I understood it completely. But there was a forklift accident right in front of her. And it just crushed her husband. Killed him. Right in front of her. I mean, she walked right into the job site. And this happened. Talk about the most unfortunate thing you could ever witness. Um, I don't think she caused a distraction. I mean, she's a real pretty girl. But uh, I don't think she caused a distraction. But for her to walk into the workplace and see her husband just, yeah. And I don't know what time of the year it was. I really don't remember. But I think it was sometime around uh, October or November. So you figure the fall, Thanksgiving season. I mean, that had to make it really, really hard for her on the holidays. Uh, losing her dad and then several years later actually watching her husband just, yeah. That's that's a terrible, terrible story. I still talk to her mom a little bit once in a while. In fact, it's been a little while since I talked to her. But uh, I have to try to talk to her daughter again and, and make sure that she's okay. And show her the engine that I have that's still from her dad's Beetle. And uh, show that it's now going into Eleanor. And uh, I know she was really, really interested in seeing the car getting together. Since, of course, I don't have the car in its entirety. I can do the best that I can to show her and, and even let her drive it, you know, as I get the thing together. And Eleanor... Um, everybody's always asking, you know, when is it going to get done? If Earl can get me into his shop within the next year, there's a great possibility that car could be on the road by next winter. 
is a good possibility that I could even have it running and driving up and down the street uh, in the next month or two. Um, at this point, there's not a whole lot left that I can do on the body. There is some still some pretty heavy things that I want to do to it, but aren't necessary to be able to get the thing rolling up and down the street, and uh, that's where I'm at right now. I got to do a little bit of modifications to the brakes on it. Um, a bomb's work was excellent, but there's a little bit of tweaking that needs to be done. Stuff that neither one of us was uh, expecting, so we got to make a few adjustments up front there. So I'm going to get with him on that. Uh, after that, when we get it all back together, I'll bleed them out, and we should have complete brakes. And the engine is just about ready to uh, get started running. Of course, I want to make sure I torque the heads down and then do an assembly on it, but that's not but a day or two of work. And uh, we're getting we're getting underway on that, and it's. It really excites me that that car is coming together. I mean, that has been a dream of mine since I was, since I could first speak and I first knew what Beetles were. I've always wanted one. And I've had others, you know, I had the White Beetle and I had the 65 Beetle and there's been a few others along the way also. I had a 69 and a 69 was my first car actually, 69 Beetle. And I had another 69 Beetle several years ago also. I flipped that one. And then there's been a ton of parts beetles along the way too so I, I've had a lot of beetles but I've always wanted one for me and, and not one of them has actually been street driven I've always been driving the fastback or Carmen Gear or some of the other cars that I've had and uh, the beetle is extremely special to me and it's something that uh, and I'm really I can't wait to to be done and it's it's coming soon and this ice in it keeps it really cold this is great mm -hmm. um, I've been doing too much of this and not enough sipping <laughs> Usually this thing will be gone by now. That's my problem. Even when, even when the eggnog is not spiked, I have a tendency to put it down way too fast. I'll drink that entire quart of it in, in, in like 20 minutes. <laughs> now anyway, probably it's good that I'm talking, so I'm not getting completely blitzed here at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> ah, the ducks are still in bed. Let's see if I can uh, get them to start shouting. Ducks! Where are you, ducks? You want yum yum? There they go. You want yum yums? You want it? Boomer's making these little noises. That skeeter is honking. Are you being a honky bird? You want pizza today? Who wants a Christmas pizza? <laughs> So anyway, I think that's it for today. Uh, there was some more stuff I wanted to share, but I don't remember. Well, this is a Q&A talkie talkie video, and I try not to run these things too long, but today's actually ran a little bit longer than I usually do, or maybe not. It says 12 and a half minutes, but I still got a whole bunch of video that came before it. So, you know, good times, fun stuff. Thank you very much, you guys, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to subscribe to Skeeter the Ducks channel. She's uh, in the other room right now, but, you know, she's just chilling in bed still. No, don't forget to subscribe to Duckman Cycles VW Garage. You can watch the process of Eleanor. That's right. As I'm rebuilding this car, the 1956 Volkswagen Beetle that was caught in a hurricane. That car was, oh, completely obliterated. Oh, oh. Mmm. I got a story about that, too. Um, Back when I first moved to Pensacola. Uh, yeah, this, this is a really interesting story. Back when I first moved to Pensacola, I started working for a local computer shop company, and actually I wound up becoming a, a partner with my own company in that same building a few years later. But uh, they had just hired a girl to work in there, and you know, I was in my young 20s, and she was in, I think she was fresh out of high school, I think she was 18 or 19 years, years old, redhead, hot, and I... <laughs> Oh man, I got a thing for redheads. They get me in trouble every single time and I never forget their names. Anyways, she uh, she moved on from the job and, and left and went on to other things and, and I hadn't talked to her in years. Well, we reconnected on Facebook uh, due to Volkswagens, which is rather interesting. Just, she popped up as a friend of a friend of a friend, had a Volkswagen on her profile. I looked at her face and said, you know, she looks familiar. I don't know why. Eh, what the hell? Friend. Let's see what happens. A day later, she starts messaging me. I know you, but I don't know from where. So... I let her wheels spin on that for about a day until she finally figured it out. <laughs> well, anyway, I was out in Jacksonville last summer to go look at uh, the Volkswagen show over there, and she actually lives over there now, and that, that's pretty far from here. You know, it's about a four- or five-hour drive or something. I don't remember. It's off the top of my head. It, it's, it's got some distance to it. And she lives over in the uh, Jacksonville area, and when she walked into the, the car show, which is indoor, by the way, she, she was approaching me, and I saw her, and I just pointed to her. I didn't say anything, and she pointed to me, too, like, sarcastically, like, what's your problem? And then she realized who I am, and we started talking for a while, and she was with her husband, and now husband, and uh, he 
told me a story about my beetle as we just started communicating about hurricane damaged ovals and everything else a light bulb went up over his head and uh, he went to the the samba.com you know the website for Volkswagen enthusiasts to uh, share a lot of information and that place is a resource that website will be on it'll be around forever as long as there's Volkswagens that that site will be around but um he referred me to a post on there about some guy that he met that lived near the bay. And, uh, right, well, actually, it's not the bay, it's the bayou, if you will. One of the bayous, Bayou, I don't know, Bayou Chico or some crap. There's so, so many different bayous that are here in the Pensacola area, I couldn't tell you which one's which without looking at a map. But anyway, he, um, went over to his house because his friend happened to live right next door and noticed there was an oval in the driveway. It wasn't my oval, but he said he went and took some pictures of it, and sure enough, in that post on the Samba, there were pictures of this oval, and he said, uh, I don't know which one you got. He says, hopefully you got that one. He says, the other one was in really, really bad shape after having been storm damaged, and the light bulb went up over my head. And I said, well, now, wait a minute. I said, was the storm damaged one green? And he says, yeah, I think it was. In the background of some of the pictures of the uh, Volkswagen, that he, the Beetle that he was taking pictures of, the one that was not storm damaged, you could see a hint of green. And that car is Eleanor. <laughs> the car that he said was completely clapped out that he wouldn't even take on. It was just a piece of, tra piece of trash. I mean, nobody was interested in that car. But, uh, yeah, that's the one that I got. So it was kind of an interesting story that he actually knew the car whereas nobody else did. And kind of an interesting story. Uh, also, the car originally was titled down in uh, Cape Coral, and I, I used to live in the Fort Myers area, so that's kind of interesting that it, it... I don't know. Fort Myers seems to be like the center of the planet. Seems like everybody goes through the Fort Myers general area, somewhere close to Fort Myers or Fort Myers itself, sometime in their lives. I don't know why that's like the hub of activity. It just seems like everything goes through there at some point, and Eleanor did too. So, um, well... I think that about sums it up for today. So here's to you guys. Merry Christmas and thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking my videos. Thank you for watching. You know, I mean, who wants to see this crazy guy that does all this, this blabbermouth and stuff and these crazy ideas which everybody thinks sucks? And I always prove them wrong in the end, but I mean, I must be good for something. Maybe I'm entertaining. Maybe I'm funny. I don't know. Maybe you guys just like me because, you know... People come to YouTube for two reasons. My brother was talking to me about this. My brother is, is a fan of Tavarish, and you've seen Tavarish. And a few other channels we also uh, both watch in common, and we're always talking back and forth about it. But people come to YouTube for two reasons. The first reason is they want to be educated. They're searching for something. They want to know how to do something, so they're going to watch somebody else's process on, on, on what they're doing on their project. And the second reason people come to YouTube, and this is the only other reason anybody comes to YouTube, and it's for the shit show. <laughs> and I'm no different. I make mistakes. I shortcut things. I, I do some some things that are really hacky. And, uh, you know, I do make mistakes. Uh, but the good thing about my mistakes is I can almost always go back from them. You know, and that's one of the... Uh, you know, see this IT behind me. That's the difference between an IT guy. That's a good one and a bad one. Boy, I've been drinking too much. That's why I'm doing this. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, two, two different types of IT guys. Good one and a bad one. A, a, a bad one is one that breaks everything. A good one is one that breaks everything but fixes it before anybody notices. So I like to put myself in the category of a good IT guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I f*** shit up same as, as anybody else, but I usually fix it before anybody notices, or by the time they complain, it's already been straightened out. <laughs> because I know what I'm doing. You know, I mean, I make mistakes along the way. Things do happen. I also trip over power cords and, you know, unplug things. I knock machines off the of shelves the same as anybody else does, maybe even a little more than they do. But I fix things, and I take responsibility, and I solve problems. And it's no different with the cars. I've got patience. I'm not one of the best people in the world for what I do. Even my dad, who's a body man for over 40 years, says that the stuff that I do, he would never have considered. And he says the guys that have been doing this stuff their entire lives couldn't touch me in the quality of my work. And I'm thinking, that's a compliment. But the difference is, you know, I don't work 9 to 5 like these guys do, and I'm not in a hurry to get things done because they're being paid piecemeal. Uh, I have a lot more patience, and this car has taken, well, you know, two years, a better part of two years to put together. And that's one of the reasons why the quality is better, because I've had so much damn time with it. I've been patient. I've been patient, and... Um, for those of you that are just starting out in the Volkswagen hobby or any hobby, if you're working on motorcycles, you're working on your Honda Civic, I'm, I'm not going to criticize you for that. Hey, if you're turning a wrench, you're good with me. But um, 
it takes patience. You got to learn these things. You got to you got to be not afraid to take things apart, not afraid to dig into it. And then once you've got it apart, you got to be determined to put it back together. You can't just bitch out and say, "Ah, oh, it's too hard," or oh, "I don't know what I'm doing," or blame somebody else for the problem. You need to finish it. And I thank you guys for watching and watching through my shit show. And I hope that I've educated you guys along the way for some of the things that you should do, and more importantly, what you shouldn't do when I do make mistakes. And I gotta say, I'm pretty good about covering my tracks when I do make mistakes, because often people don't notice some of the things that I do. But uh, like I said, I'm able to fix it before they notice. <laughs> So thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Pluck that little dingle bell you see down there next to the subscribe button. Don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles VW Garage up on the Facebook group page. If you'd like to email me, send me a Merry Christmas greetings even. DuckmanCycles at DuckShit.net. Once again, DuckmanCycles at DuckShit.net. Ski to the Duck's got her own YouTube page. VV the Duck VV right here is where you're watching this one. And Duckman Cycles and VW Garage is where I do my, my Volkswagen projects, motorcycle projects, and any other type of project-related stuff. It's been mostly Volkswagen stuff these days, but you guys get the point. Thanks very much for watching. Merry Christmas. And uh, I think I'm going to have to make another eggnog soon. This one's uh, about halfway done, so it'll be done by the time uh, I start editing this video. That's for sure. Thanks again, you guys. Merry Christmas. See you later. Boom.